What's up guys, we're here at a Airbnb in North Dallas and we're gonna walk through that um, are good and also point out some things that the owner could do better. And if you're considering getting an Airbnb, then these are some things to look out for. So let's go ahead and go right in. First things first is we're right here. Uh, all we see, if you wanna come around the corner a little bit, this is a uh, smart August smart lock. So the owner can program the code and the cool thing about this is that you can reset the code remote from anywhere. You can actually even tie this into Airbnb as well. So you can have the system reprogram the code for you. There's a couple different smart lock solutions out there. There's a remote lock, there's a few other ones. So every single guest that checks in, it can automatically reset the code. The only thing that I'm noticing is that we have a standard light bulb right here. What I would prefer to have is some sort of video camera on the front of the property. That way you can see who comes and goes. It's really important that you know like who's coming into your property. One of the things we do is we ask every guest for an ID. That way we can see who's coming in and we can match against the ID for the number of guests. This helps you really limit the number of people that are coming in. And also if you have like a party issue, you can really squash it because people coming in, let's say they had four people they're booking for and you have six people or eight people show up and it starts to get to 10, 12. You can really nip it in the butt. You can just let the guests know, hey, you can't bring in more people that are on your reservation. If it's family or something like that, then let's go ahead and just add them to the reservation. That's an additional fee. So I like having a spotlight, um, something, they do have a floodlight over there, but at the same time, um, that's not a smart floodlight. So it'll just turn on with motion. Uh, however, you don't have cameras. So Ring makes a really cool system that has floodlights with a camera, infrared, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and go right in. Now, the cool thing about this lock is they have an August smart lock on the back. So this is a motor that actually powers the regular lock. So you don't really have to change out much you don't have to have any sort of keypad on the front of the door. You have just the standard deadbolt. And then also too, all you have to do is turn it like that and it locks the door. So it's really easy for guests. I would also recommend having like some sort of um, laminated sign or something like that that explains how to utilize the lock. Just makes it a lot easier for guests. And it's a lot easier too for you because you don't have to keep messaging guests or have to schedule some sort of message that says, hey, all you have to do in order to lock the front door is just turn the big, knobby thing, right? And then that way it'll lock the front door. So we're here in the main living room and this closet's just basically empty. Um, this house, we didn't really, I didn't really know what we're gonna get getting into. So um, there's some really old furniture. Um, I would say, you know, nine times out of 10, it's fine. But at the same time, you're really kind of limiting your earning potential because a lot of this furniture is, you know, it's very dated. So they might've just gone down to the thrift store. It might be somebody's house. Um, I don't want to like pass judgment, but when I'm looking at an Airbnb, a lot of times I'm looking for what would appeal to a female and then also to what would be acceptable to a male because females oftentimes they're, they're about 85% of the shoppers out there. So when we're looking to try and rank our listing in the search engines, we really want to get something that's eye catching. And this is, um, you know, very cultural, which is good. But at the same time, uh, a lot of the trends or themes that people are looking for that they're paying a premium for, it involves some more chic stuff, some boho, some um, very stylish things. And this is a very uh, eclectic, very you know, dated. Over here, we have like a really old school TV, which it looks like there is, I don't see any sort of like fire stick or anything like that. So I'm gonna assume that this just has like antenna Wi-Fi or you know cable TV that's picking up like local. Uh, all of our homes, we have smart homes in there. So we have a uh, Roku TV that you can get on Amazon. It's about 400 bucks. I'll put a link down in the description. And um, that's really nice because you can get Hulu, you can get YouTube TV, you can get uh, Netflix, you can get Amazon, you can get almost all the channels. And it gives the guests a lot of um, breadth in terms of what they can watch. And also you can airplay it too. This is like very, very dated. So uh, a lot of people that are starting with Airbnb, it's their first or second property. They're really looking for something that's cheap to get started and that way they can prove the concept to themselves. But we've proven this time and time again that the more you spend in your Airbnb, the better you get with results. So let's go ahead and go over here to the first bedroom. Uh, so this one is uh, very sparsely decorated. Again, another thing that a lot of folks, a lot of new Airbnb hosts make a mistake of is, so if you come over here, they have literally a bed and a closet with a two pieces of art and you have some hangers. The first thing that this person needs to add is they need to add some sort of luggage rack, somewhere to put the suitcase. We have the luggage on the floor right now and that's kind of a problem because 
A, if they have bed bugs, now the bed bugs can crawl out on the floor. And B, if there are bed bugs here, the bed bugs can crawl into the suitcase. So rather than putting it on the bed, which is what most people will do, you're able to then put it on either a nightstand, a dresser, or some sort of luggage rack. Or you can even put it right here and be able to, I'd probably take out this, this rod right here. It's not really necessary. It comes out really easy. And then I would just put a luggage rack right there, disable this, or remove this from the wall. And then you have you know space for two. So you know it's a two-person bed, two luggage rack. It's really cheap. They're like five or six bucks or something like that over at like um, Goodwill or something. So that is what I would do for this room. I would add some, probably some better art. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty decently furnished. Um, but I would I would put a TV here as well because. A lot of times the people that are staying here, they're looking for you know, a way of being able to kind of unwind. So maybe they want to read a book. You have just one nightstand. There's, it's a two person bed. So maybe add a nightstand to the other side as well. Move the bed a little bit more in the center. Some thoughts. Put like a door stopper here as well. And so fix the smoke detector. You got two smoke detectors here as well. And again, disabled smoke detector doesn't work. So. I don't know why we have two, one on each wall, but I think it's probably overkill. We'll probably take one of those down. So this is like the kids' bedroom, and I think the space could also be utilized a little bit better. Um, again, this is probably their primary residence, so it's one of the reasons why it's decorated like this. What you can do is you can put bunks on one wall, and then over on the other wall, you can put a television, maybe like a little dresser or something like that for the kids if they're gonna stay for maybe a week or two, or they're gonna stay for a month. You have to think about it from the standpoint of I'm gonna turn off the fan because it's making too much noise. You have to think about it from a standpoint of if someone's gonna come here for a few days, but they need to extend for a few weeks or months, then what do you have available to make their stay enjoyable? And for me, if I was gonna stay here and I was gonna stay for a month or two, then I'd be looking for a dresser or something. If I'm coming for a couple of days, then a dresser is fine, but having at least a place I can put my luggage is much more preferred. So here is another, I, I would consider this the master bedroom. And we have a TV mounted to the wall, but again, you know, depending on who you're trying to serve, uh, if you're serving more um, immigrant families, people that are coming from India, Asia, China, uh, coming from Korea, coming from um, Mexico or from Central America, they're probably not gonna have as much concern about the television. But if you wanna be able to service those types of families and also serve Americans, then a lot of Americans are looking for a larger TV, especially in the master bedroom. So usually what we do for the masters, we put in a 50 inch flat screen TV. I think overall for the de decorations, they're either from Jordan or Lebanon or some other Middle Eastern um, type country, but that's also, they said in the title Mediterranean. So I'm assuming that it's Jordan or uh, could be also Israel where they're from. Uh, it has a lot of influence from that part of the world. But at the same time, I would say a lot of the, the decorations, this is very like old school. So maybe do like some sort of modern touch, work with a designer to try and bring the old uh, culture uh, into the modern age. Um, it's very, let's just say it's very eclectic. It's, again, it's probably a family home. So um, as far as the bed sheets go, uh, I think this is, you know, it's just, again, it's just something you had lying around the house. It doesn't really scream out like clean. What I love to do is I love to put white on the bed. And the reason why is because you can easily bleach it. Uh, almost every kind of fluid comes out of white if you run enough bleach in the system. And then you can also accent it with a colorful pillow, like a nice bright red on white pillows. It pops a lot more in your, your pictures and it also makes the room look a lot lighter as well. Another tip you can do is the light right here is white, which is good. A lot of times they're yellow. So if you're getting a lot of yellow in your photos, then what you wanna do is swap out the lights for a white light and that'll make your photos look brighter. Here in the master bedroom or bathroom, there's some cracks in the ceiling. So I'd probably just come up here and I'd just seal these cracks. Uh, this looks like a pretty old house. Maybe someone remodeled it recently, maybe before the owners bought it. This is nice. I mean, it definitely needs the cock to be fixed a little bit, but this looks pretty nice. And it's definitely a converted tub. Or an old slide in shower. I probably, take this off the wall. This, this could fit fine, but I would take this track right here off the wall and just kind of seal it in, make it look nice. And then I might even do like a frameless shower here if the owner wanted to invest a little bit more money. 
uh, just because frame looks really nice. This is like a nicely done shower, but this looks a little bit cheap. If you have fast internet, which is good, it's really critical for, especially an Airbnb or a place that you want to have as a work location. Because a lot of people are working remote nowadays. I might try and use this space a little bit better by adding like a desk. And that way I can just have like a little desk with maybe a chair. So they've got a whole bunch of extra um, blankets and quilts and everything like that. That's really good, especially if the AC is not like the most active. Uh, over here we have a, this is what I was talking about earlier. I would put one of these in each of the bedrooms, probably two of them. And the reason why is because they only cost between six and $12, um, depending on when you get it, where you get them from. I think brand new, they're like 20 bucks, but put one in each one of the closets, at least one, probably two. Because if you have a couple traveling, usually it's mom and dad, and then aunt and uncle, or the two oldest kids, and then the next two kids, something like that, you're able to then accommodate more people, which means you're able to put more heads in beds, which means you're able to charge more per day. The bathroom, again, it kind of, it doesn't match at all. So old, looks like rusted out, like worn out um, dark handles. Here we have brass, here we have silver, silver, brass, like kind of an upgraded, but really looks like kind of like weird with this exposed area. Here we have brass, a sliding glass door, and then over there we have a curtain, like. The, the other thing is like, they put these really cheap razors in here, which is like, I think the person they're trying to target is the work traveler, someone that's coming in, just needs a safe, clean, affordable place to live, and they're looking to come and stay overnight. They're trying to mimic a hotel, and we have like, um, Freshman gel toothpaste, which is interesting. I've never seen toothpaste that's clear before. And we have some little soaps and stuff like that, face and body soap and uh, shampoo. So again, unique. It's another way to keep your costs down. Uh, smart thermostat, I would definitely recommend changing that out. The guests can come down here and they can just set it down to 61 degrees if they want, or they can come up here and set it up to like 95 degrees on the heat and they have complete control. We actually get smart thermostats and recommend um, either Honeywell has a smart thermostat or you can get Ecobee or you can get Nest thermostats. Nest tends to heat up and that causes the temperature to read higher. Whereas Ecobee is probably one of the best ones because you can put sensors in each room and it'll actually read based on all the room sensors and try and keep the temperature moderated across those. All right, so we kind of enter the main foyer and um, again, I think they're going for work workforce housing because we have uh, some plastic seating. It's not really like your typical um, high-end dining room furniture. We have a, a very cheap wooden table, which wasn't even repainted. It's probably by like a garage or something like that. But again, not knocking it, I'm just saying, who are you trying to serve, right? You're trying to serve more immigrant families, people that are coming in trying to find a cheap, affordable place to stay, that they can come that's safe and clean. Definitely hit the mark. If you're trying to go after a little bit more high end, then it's definitely not gonna appeal to something like that. To better use, utilize the space, I'd have some sort of shelving back here. Maybe something over there as well, like even like a china closet, something that has you know additional um, places to stack things. Uh, better utilize the space. So again, we kind of have like mi mix matching appliances. Like we have like some dark um, stainless and some black. It looks like they literally replaced the doors. So these doors are Frigidaire, and I think this is uh, a different total um, refrigerator itself. What I do like about the kitchen is that they've labeled where everything is. So you have glass mugs here, you have plates, you have tea and coffee right above the coffee maker. It makes sense logistically. Um, I don't know what's up here, nothing. You have spices here as well. Again, they know their audience, right? They're trying to cater to families that like to cook with lots of spices, so they supply those things. Um, a new microwave here. We have an old stove. Looks like it's or it looks like it's kind of new. Um, whatever they are using on here is discoloring the stove. I'd recommend using like a stainless steel polish. We have a very interesting um, cabinet space. I guess um, I've never seen something like this before. Again, going for families that are looking to cook some rice. What I do like is that they have basically everything you need to be able to cook and it's all visible. So it's not like hidden. You don't have to try and search for it. They have additional pots and pans down here as well, which is nice. And then um, just a large fridge. So the obviously it's a house, so you can put 
a lot of stuff in the refrigerator. Some people don't though. Some people go with like a mini fridge or a tiny fridge. And it's really just not, it's not great for, for trying to stay long term. The other thing I'd say too is if they haven't already done this is when your guests are checking out, that smells horrible. I would have my cleaners come through and I'd have them run this dishwasher with some soap or something like that, or maybe vinegar. Because whatever the heck they put in here was, Ugh. The other thing I noticed is that they've got, they've got two coffee makers here. So they've got traditional tea or traditional coffee. And then they also have a Keurig, which is fine, but these end up being really expensive. So we're not gonna buy Keurigs anymore. We're gonna buy either a Mr. Coffee or like a drip coffee. So basically it's like a container and it has a, like a, a funnel that you can put a coffee um, filter in and then you can put the coffee in and it just uses gravity to pull the coffee through. Uh, we have like a, a nice, I would say decent garage. Um, they painted the floors. So if you come over here, you see they sealed the floors. So whether you put a car in here or you spill a drink on here, wine, something like that, something that would normally stain, it won't stain. Uh, this is really easy to spray off and just like pressure wash. Uh, laundry, obviously. This is a uh, addition. And you can tell because the step down here, they built this onto the back of the house. Um, I'd say whoever built this, whether it's the current owner or the previous owner, uh, it wasn't built that well. Um, you have a lot of settling and they have to come back in here and like you can see how the house is kind of separating. There's a lot of cracks on the walls. They need to come back in here and seal it again, repaint. This looks really janky. Again, it looks cheap. Again, I think that the way that they're marketing this place, it's cheap and affordable and it's clean, right? I don't really like this bed too much. I think this is like a kid's bed. Yeah, so it looks like there's some sort of weird addition. Yeah, so it's like a full-size bed, but you're not really utilizing this space. There's a lot of space in here. So you could probably have like either two full-size beds or you could do like a bunk bed over here as long as it doesn't hit the fan. This is the only space that's actually like a workspace, but again, it's it's not ergonomic. It wouldn't be like a place I'd want to stay for months. I'd probably just stay here for like a night or two and it becomes more transient housing. Uh, they do have some house rules, which is good. They also have a house manual as well, which is really important. Definitely put them in all your properties. Have a way for the guests to be able to access the Wi-Fi. Uh, they have some points of interest, which is nice, as well as also the distance. Um, nearby places that you can go to in Irving kid-friendly restaurants. I mean, they were really thorough. Like if you wanna take a look, they were really thorough with setting this up, which is really great. You can also add this to a digital version and send it to every single one of your guests. And that actually goes the extra mile. So, I mean, they got a lot of stuff in here. They took some time to really build this out. It's a shame that they didn't build out, you know, the rest of their listing very well, so. And we have a uh, walking distance to the nearest park. So again, they're trying to go for more families and business travel. Here we have, Another living room. Again, this is an addition as well. You can tell because of the step down and also all the cracks along the walls. Over here in the corners, if you want to come in here. You can see right there, um, the crack coming down. Literally the whole part is like breaking off the house. So what they would want to come in here and do is raise the foundation on the side and get it to come back together so that they can then seal it up and it doesn't look like it's falling off. The other thing I'd say is right over here, you definitely want a bigger TV. There's about six or seven people can sit here comfortably. Um, I would wanna have at least like a 50 inch in here. Could even go as high as a 64 inch and it would just come over here basically to the ends of the wall. Get rid of this lamp or move it away from the wall. Maybe put it over there. And that way you have nice viewing angle for everybody and everybody can see the television. Another thing we noticed is that their Wii only has one remote. So it's like we have a eight or 10 people here, but we only have one remote to play Wii. So you know, not really conducive to people hanging out and uh, chilling together. We don't have any board games or anything like that in here. Board games, card games, um, those are really, you know, great ways of being able to come together as friends and family, be able to spend time together, so. What I like about the backyard is that they do have a, uh, a smart camera right up here. It looks like it got angled off though, so it doesn't really give them full view. I like to uh, make sure that they know we're trying to take care of the place. It's also unplugged too. So it looks like it doesn't even hook up to anywhere. Um, spotlights, again, I think this is a, this could be a ring, which might 
or it's just a motion sensor. What I might do is, I would definitely replace these. This looks really old. Uh, it looks like this kind of got knocked around a little bit. So maybe swap that out for like a new table. Uh, this is like a little slack, so maybe tighten that up over there uh, so it doesn't like sag down. But this is a nice little sunshade. It gives us a nice shade during the Texas heat, which gets really hot in Texas. Right here, definitely, you don't have to go super expensive on the grill. It's a regular charcoal grill is fine. We have a lot of guests that come in that they just like that. You can get a, a smoker as well, because we're in Texas. That's pretty common. I think this space, there's a lot of space back here. They have a smoker over there, so that's what I was talking about. Oh, and this is really nice. I didn't see that earlier. So you can come over here and you can smoke some meats or something like that. Um, definitely have, if you're gonna have a grill, ask your cleaners to come out and clean it so that it stays nice and fresh. This is pretty worn out. And so it's been kind of worn out. I would definitely get this wood replaced. Just go down to Home Depot or something like that. It looks like this whole thing needs to be rebuilt because this is really rotted out. Uh, I don't really think it's that safe. So you don't wanna have like a liability where someone sits on that thinking it's safe and they fall right through and they hurt themselves. It becomes a lawsuit, so. I would look at having uh, this shed be moved over to that corner and I would build an extra unit back here. So I would probably build a maybe a one or two story um, studio or a one bedroom, one bath. And that way I can have, obviously we have a path right there from the driveway. So you can section this off, lock that door or make that door accessible. And then you have an extra bedroom bath. So you have technically a five bedroom, three bath as opposed to a four bedroom, two bath. And again, if you're gonna have larger groups having their own bedroom, bathroom, uh, place to cook, as well as also kind of exclusive space is really appealing. And then you can actually have these as two different listings and you can also run them as one large listing. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below and be sure to like this video. If you wanna have more Airbnb tips, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and be notified when we come out with another video. And I'll see you guys next time.